changed. And I'm just amazed that we're here today. By the way, uh, Dr. Sorrells, thank you and Paul Quinn for hosting this. Thank you, Senator West, another elected official for the African American <clears throat> Leadership Institute. And Dr. Harry Robinson, I saw him earlier. This is the 80th year for the congratulation of the centennial at Bear Park. But the travesty is we're 80 years later where we were 80 years ago. Because what has happened is, is that 80 years ago in the city of Dallas, and trust me, and when they outdid it, and if you go down to the seventh floor of the Dallas Public Library and do some history, you'll understand what Habalazel and all of those so-called founding fathers did, how they out financed Houston to get the centennial here. And on that plot of land where the African American Museum is located, they didn't fund the black project in that centennial. We didn't start in South Dallas. If you look at the Galleria, Representative Giddings, I'm still doing cemetery sites, White Rock, in and around the Galleria at Valley View. That's where African Americans started. The Wynn property. Max Shane wrote, that was, that was a guy by the name of W.T. White. And I thank Professor Michael Phillips. By the way, his book is White Metropolis, just in case he he didn't mention it, but that's the title of his book. And if you haven't read that, then you really don't know what's going on. He is the author of White Metropolis, and very little has changed. A guy by the name of W.T. White, who was the superintendent of DISD school, took that property under the guise of eminent domain and began to push African people south. He talked about Thomas Hall, that's short North Dallas. Love Field is Ellum Thicket. You need to know when I came to Dallas, Roosevelt High off of 175 was flooded. When the water came up, all we saw was the boats. It was black folks who continued to get pushed around. And Dr. Claude Anderson told us that black labor quite well. I'm going to tell you something. This whole Fair Park thing is the camel's nose under the tent. J.B. Jackson is spinning in his grave. In 1960, the Fair Park homeowners, and they talk about that 277 acres. What they don't tell you about is that other 70 acres that they've acquired here in the last few years in violation of the contract with the city of Dallas. There's a number of things that you have not been told of, but Dr. Claude Anderson told us that black labor, white wealth. One of the things to watch out for is thoroughfares, is freeways. And we saw that years ago as they took 45. By the way, those of you who can exit Martin Luther King, you couldn't always do that. That was the Elsa Fay Higgins, J.B. Jackson. That was the fight to get ramps going into South Dallas. It's always been flyover. But that 272nd acre was part of the Fair Park Homeowners Association. Go back and do the archive in 60 minutes with J.B. Jackson and Walt. You know, that whole, they talk about Central Expressway, by the way, for those of you who just got to town, that's Central Track. Huh. There's a reason Freedom Cemetery is there. That's a reason Freedman Cemetery is there. Central track. When you look at what William C. William Sidney Pittman, Booker T. Washington's only son-in-law, that Knights of Pythias Temple down on Elm Street, that was African American community. No, it's <laughs> it, that, that, that was our black community. And we're still getting pushed. Look, look, and I bought some of the articles. I, you know, I don't know why I did it. 
But they keep talking about all of it. But in 1950, as we migrated, and he talked about uh, the, the, the so-called committees, and I don't care what you're talking about. I talked to somebody earlier who was talking about Hamilton Park. You know, I, I know the legend of Hamilton Park, um, Brother Washington. But when you look and see what Howell and Salem did, they were talking about building Negro housing. And they came after Brown versus Boer because of Howland Park and the, and the domestics that were living in the island. So get the, hit, the real history of what's going on with regards to having a park. But it is no different in terms of what's going on with Fair Park now. And so what I want you to say, you know, and by the way, A. Maceo Smith lived in short on a doubt. His home was in short. Uh, Fanny Smith, his wife, recently died. They were living there. We watched it. I'm going to real quick, the, the camel's nose of the tent that concerns me. You know, keep talking about Fair Park, 277 acres and that other 70 acres that they don't talk about. But keep in mind, on the project list is to take I-30, back to black labor, white women, down the grade. I-30, running east-west, at grade, goes into East Dallas. Remember the fight about I-345? Mm -hmm. That's the overpass. That's what they call the flyover. They want I-345 to come to grade. Isn't it interesting? They want I 30 to come to grade. They want I 345 to come to grade. The reason is the state of Texas owns 130 acres of land between I 30, which floods when you drop off that hill, leaving Fair Park, and the Fair Park. 130 acres. When you look at the Dallas Central Appraisal District, the highest producing per capita land in the city is what we used to call short north Dallas, uptown. Uh -huh. And that's what they see with our 345 coming to grade and our 30 coming to grade coming out of Fair Park. I could go in and talk about that 80 uh, acres, and I want to talk about that. But you know what's void in this contract? There is nothing that is specific, not only with WMBEs. It's not there. Oh, by the way, it's there doing the bonds. But when you get past the bonds, it's not there. What all is not missing? I invite you to read that contract. I invite you to read and see what the history of this community is. And the city of Dallas, and I generated a lot of, they got what they call tier one. And some of us watch it because we see who's moving into tier one. Dallas is at 97% utilization. And what that basically means is, is that we are almost non-existent. I like the colonization piece. You can call it you know, gentrification. It's colonization, recolonize. Now, some of us are watching. I know the voter folks in the back there, they ain't got the numbers with them today. But you start looking at those of us who represent tier one, you start looking to see who's moving into tier one. There is something afoot here. And their part is the camel's nose under the tent. I agree. We need a part. We need a green space, but we need an economic engine that includes that community. Mill City, because when we moved into that community in 1951, they started bombing it. By the way, that was a Jewish community. Hmm. That was a Jewish community. They started bombing when we moved in. And if you think, you know, uh, I just read right. You know, it's it just forward, they <laughs> bomb pro. You know, this whole book is about bombing. All right. All right. All right. South Dallas, in and around Fair Park. Mm. They bombing you now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
You just don't know what the incendiary device is. Mm. All right now. Come on with it. Oh, oh, you want dinner? Okay, I thought you were, I thought you were in the church. <laughs> yeah, 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 so anyway, uh, as I go to my seat, uh, you know, there's a reason that some of us see a number of like we said we cannot watch idols as though nothing is occurring. It's on our watch. We watch WT White do that to this community. We watch, go and get the history on, on all these so-called citizens' charter and all of these other founding fathers. This is the 80th centennial. A. Maceo Smith had to go get his own money. They said, we'll let you in. But he had to go get his own money. Ain't nothing changed. Amen. <laughs>